يحيينا ويرضاه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم To proceed Here we are gathered and assembled for a topic that concerns each one of us the topic that is the affair of every believer his heart how is his heart how is his affair with his Lord especially at the time of prayer at the time of zikr and at the time of the recitation of the Quran we come before repeating various of topics, but we said in this day and age where we are, what is extremely crucial, however been neglected, is the topic of qaswat al-qalb, the hardness of the heart. I remind the brothers, those as a request of the masjid, to have their mask and to establish social distancing. So this topic of them qaswat al-qalb, we find we've been afflicted with this. We're being surrounded with a society that even those who come to the masajid have been afflicted with it some way, somehow. We need to address, we need to speak about our hearts, how we are. It is the control center for the body. It is a'adham the greatest of musibah, yubtala biha al-abd, is that he has a hard heart. For verily the hellfire has been made to melt hard hearts. The verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are sufficient for us, Yahu. If one ayah for a non-believer in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jubair ibn Mut'im, when he was a non-Muslim, he heard one ayah and it had an impact on his heart. He heard the ayah in Surah At-Tur, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in, Am humul khaliqu. Were they created from nothing? Are they the creators? There then Jubair ibn Mut'im, at the time he's not even a Muslim, he said, Kada qalbi an yatir min bayna janbay. As if my heart was going to burst through my chest. This is a person who's not even a Muslim. One ayah had an impact on him. This is this how should it be the verses of Allah? Imagine the case of us being Muslims, where we're hearing the verses of Allah being recited and we're not touched, phased. When was the last time we got emotional for the verses of Allah? Lo anzalna had al Quran. عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ This is in relation to a mountain. That if the Qur'an was revealed onto it, it would split and asunder. It will be in a state where it softens and humbles itself before this Qur'an. We fear most of the things before us is aiming for our heart. The moment you step out this door, every channel that is going to your heart, from your ears, from your sight, from everything that leads to it, the goal is to penetrate and pollute that heart that you have. And it aims gradually until it becomes ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ That your hearts harden and it becomes like stones in its harshness and severity. 
Imagine this organ, this sensitive organ that we have. It becomes in a state where it's so hard that if a person were to start from Baqara all the way to Nas, not one single tear would become from his eyes. He could be from the whole Ramadan standing the first night till the end of Ramadan, not once one tear came from his eyes for the ayat of Allah. Have our hearts become that hard? Do, not, do we need not more to speak about this? If this is afflicting people that ascribe to the religion, we have to remind ourselves of the verses of Allah. فَوَيْلُ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ So woe to those who our hearts are hard from the remembrance of Allah. Our scholars, they said, تَفَقَّدْ قَلْبَكْ عِنْدَ ثلاث. Find where your heart is in three scenarios. Each one of us should ask this question. The first instance is how is your heart, qalb, present at the time of Salat. The second scenario, when you're doing tasbih and saying Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, is your heart present? The third scenario, in the tilawat al Quran, when we're reciting the speech of Allah. If your heart is not present in these three scenarios, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْبَابِ مغلق. Our scholars there then have mentioned, know for sure that your, the door between you and your Lord is closed. There's a barrier. A barrier between Mawlak, your aid, your support. A barrier of the greatest reasons for success for you. Each one of us need to speak about why we have been afflicted with this affair. And our scholars, they said there's no other affliction greater than this. For really other things, it has its tahara, purification. But when the hearts become hard, it gets harder and harder. And this sometimes you find by the passing of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that some people, by the passing of time, their hearts doesn't become softer, it becomes harder. So now we say, it is time for us to address this affair. It is time to find out why we are in the state. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشِعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَّلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Has the time not come for the believers for their hearts to be humbled and soft for the remembrance of Allah, for the Qur'an. So we can enjoy the speech of Allah. We don't want to be taken by this hardness. The moments the Qur'an is recited, we start yawning. We start feeling sleepy. We start being taken by fatigue. We start looking quickly for an excuse to do something else. Or we find when we pick up the book of Allah, we do not enjoy it. The speech of our Creator. No matter who you are, take this topic serious. Our Prophet Muhammad wasallam, he has clarified in his sunnah, clearly, that in abad al nas min Allah al qalb al qasi, the furthest of people to Allah, the most distant you can be, if you have a hard heart. When we hear a reminder 
and we sit in a gathering and we hear someone giving us words of our, our Creator, speech that people before, those who are being given glad tidings for paradise, they would cry when hearing. And our affair, when we hear a reminder, is as if we have been given glad tidings of paradise and we don't cry. Read about Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Read about Umar ibn Khattab. How they were with the verses of Allah. How they were with tasbih. How they were with in their prostration. And they were giving glad tidings to paradise. We need to speak about this. Our society have been corrupted because of their hearts. Shaitan, he's aiming solely to penetrate to our hearts. It is a musibah, ma ba'daha musibah. It is a tragedy. There's no tragedy beyond it concerning this affair. That is the hardness of the heart because it opens to that which is worse. So we wanted to take some words of a great imam who gave much attention to what softens the heart, reminding ourselves that there's a various of things that we can do to soften our heart. He listed the scholar Ibn Rajab rahimahullah who died in 79.5 Hijri, or 795 Hijri, after the hijrah and the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a number of him hears. And we'll take it generally before we read. And we ask the brother, inshallah, to read three lines at a time. And it doesn't need much commentary from ourselves. Just hear every word and take it in. Remember what's going to be said that this may be one of us that's being addressed. And from the things that he lists that softens our heart is the first of them is increasing and moistening our tongue with the remembrance of Allah. Moistening our tongue with the remembrance of Allah but not just uttering it with words that is uttered. A person sometimes is on his phone and he's always talking to someone else and he finds himself doing tasbih. He's multitasking with tasbih, tahmid. Is there any such thing of multitasking with tasbih and tahmid? No such thing. Your heart needs to be attentive. You need to utter these words, astighfar, when you say it from the beginning or the, the end of your day, being attentive. We carry so much baggage of sins. If Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the best man that walked on the face of the earth, he would say astighfar in one gathering. Just forget about the whole day. In one gathering alone, more than a hundred times, or a hundred times, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. And قَدْ غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأْخِرُ And his previous of affairs of any shortcomings or that which to come has been overlooked and pardoned for him. And we walk with so much confidence. When we increase of istighfar, it doesn't take much. When you're driving to work, do istighfar. Before you turn on that news channel, before you check the weather, do some istighfar. Maybe that may be a reason for your day to be of that which goes the best of way. Do tasbih, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. You don't have to be an ex a lo extreme lo scholar to do these words. It doesn't take much. Khafifatan al-lisan is light on the tongue. 
yet heavy on the scale. That's why we should never judge anyone else. Maybe his heart is soft and your heart is hard. Maybe you read so much Quran, but he reads little, but he's touched by it. Maybe when he makes dua, he, his dua comes solely from his heart. And you make so much dua and your heart, your dua doesn't go beyond the sky. Don't judge anyone. The judger of the heart sees Allah. And also from the things that he mentioned is visiting the graveyard. It's unfortunate in our day and age it takes someone to die for us to go to the graveyard. And it has to be someone that we know. Or else visiting the graveyard just to take some rem remembrance and heed, it has become forgotten, non-existent in our day and age in most places. Just by hearing a person, he's asked, he said, I passed by the graveyard. He said, why are you there? Did someone die? Is there a funeral? He says, no. I'm visiting the, the people of the grave to take some heed. Zuru al-qubur fa innaha tudhakkirukum al-akhirah. It reminds you of the hereafter. It reminds you that you are next. وَتَشْهَدُ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ دَفْنَ خِلٍ كَأَنَّكَ لَا تُرَادُ لِمَا شَهِدْتَ Because sometimes some people, janazas are not enough for them to soften their hearts. They come, one janazah, another brother gets killed. Especially in our affair of Toronto, we perhaps a, a, a depart from a janazah and some of us, miss that same asr that is coming in next. Some of us, we need something more. Going to the graveyard for other than a funeral. Take some heed from the dead. That is the best of admonitions that you can receive. It softens the heart. This Imam Ibn Rajab mentions it. Also, looking and taking care of those who are not so fortunate. When you show some mercy and sympathy to those who are not so fortunate, Wallahi softens your heart. You can be a ruthless character. You can be someone with extreme hardness of the heart. But you bring him where he starts to show mercy to those who are not so fortunate. The disabled, the orphans, the people that are in need, his heart becomes soft. Along with that, reciting the Book of Allah. Each one of us do not allow, no matter how busy you are, that the sun rises. Or we even say that one day goes by and we did not read one ayah. We're not talking about Fatiha from our regular five daily salawats. The, that which is not obligatory, reading something voluntary from the Book of Allah. You can be the most busiest of person. According to your schedule, just take literally a short span. Pick up a mushaf and make it a habit in your day to read the speech of Allah. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will complain on the Day of Judgment that his people, a group of them, boycotted this book, abandoned it, left it on his shelf, maybe for decoration. Or maybe he got the mushaf as a nice gift. Everybody says, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Days go by, he doesn't read it. Al Quran, Hujjatun Lak O Alaik. The Quran is a proof for you or against you. No matter who you are, you can be the most busiest of person. You are not too busy to read some ayat. If one ayat changed the life of great people, people that before were highway robbers or people that were burglars, criminals, 
Fudayl ibn Iyad, one ayah affected his life. أَلَمْ يَأْنِي لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَنَ أَزْلَ مِنْ حَقٍ Has the time not come that the believers, that their hearts humble, become humbled and soft for the remembrance of Allah? He was about to do a crime and he heard this verse. He said, the time has come. The great Imams, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, one ayah inspired him. Do not look down at even reading one eye. Don't say, I'm extremely busy. I'm extremely tired. No matter what you are doing, take some time in your day to read from the Book of Allah. فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Read what's made easy. Even if you find yourself you can't read that the best, الَّذِي يَتَتَعْتَ بِالْقُرْآنِ the one who stutters with the Qur'an. Lahu ajran, he gets two rewards. What are you missing out? We find that it relieves us from much stress. Or else we find ourselves doing things that harden our hearts. Excessive speech, idle talk. We'll sit and talk for one hour, two hours. And we come out from the gathering, we feel in this state of that it, we've been overwhelmed with something. It could be maybe the most funniest of speech. Come out, we wake up from that the next day, we feel in a state as if we're depressed. There's something that hard in our hearts. Or kathra to noam, excessive sleep. Some people, they're excessively sleeping. It hardens the heart. A kathratul akal, eating constantly a lot. This hardens the heart. Some people feel, they said, I'm depressed, I'm eating. This is not the way of dealing with it. Also, things of extreme level of entertainment, when a person indulges into it, he finds that his heart is getting further and further from away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our fellow brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to say it as it is. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Hud, Surah al-Hud wa akhawatuha shayyabatsni, it made my hair grow gray, that when he would recite these surahs, Surah Al-Hud and its likes, because of how much it would affect him, it would make some of his hair go gray. Us, the dunya has made our hair grow gray. It's the opposite. He's saying, my hair has gone gray because of the stress of this life. This, that, this. We need to realize what's the problem. Another thing that he mentions in Murajab Rahimahullah as an overview is realizing your position in this world. Be in this dunya as if you are a foreigner. Anyone traveled to a foreign country before? How he's there? Does he invest so much in that land? Or is he there fulfilling his need and once he's done, he keeps it moving? This is how you are in the dunya. You're not investing so much. Oh, abiru sabil, even a better level, that is superior as a wayfarer, someone passing by. Ever find someone come by you, visit you? He said, I was just passing by. I'm on my way to this destination. I just need to get a few goods and I'm on my way. This is the second level that you could be in this dunya. When you invest so much in this dunya that you forget about investing in the next life, it hardens the heart. And the people of the past, they, needed, they were needed to be told, Don't forget your portion of this life. 
There was so much investing in the Akhirah, they had to be told, do not forget your portion in the next life. But in our time, we are told, do not forget your portion of the Akhirah. The opposite. It is the qulub, the hearts. So we're going to speak about this affair. But verily, mahalul nazar, what Allah looks at is our hearts. لا ينظروا إلى سوركم ولا أجسامكم. Some people, they're so concerned of how they look in front of the people, waiting for everyone to say, "MashaAllah, Tabarakallah." That's nice, but what about the inner affair? What about what Allah is saying concerning your heart? So we're going to start, inshallah. We ask the brother to read three lines and pay attention to it. These words doesn't need much explanation. It's a reminder on its own. Bismillah. <laughs> قال المصنف رحمه الله أفي دار الخراب تذل تبني وتعمر ما لعمران خلقت وما ترك وما ترك وما تركت لك الأيام عذرا لقد وضعتك لكن ما اتعظت تنادي للرحيل بكل حين وتعلن إنما المقصود أنت and the translation being is it in this abode of perish that you continuously build and construct for surely you were not created for this and the days of life have not, le- have not left for you any excuses rather they have admonished you however you still do not take heed they, these days of life call for departure always and they announce that indeed the one intended is you so those words that were read about this affair of the hardness of the heart as a reminder that Rajab rahimahullah he speaks about this life he calls it Darul Kharab a land that is on a, a place that is on a verge of destruction it is a perishing and a boat you build you construct you invest you do so much and maybe perhaps you don't get to do what you actually aim for. Wallahi, when I was in Yemen, I know a brother, personally, that he was working on a house. And he was working on it for almost to two years, or even more. And in Yemen, that's a long period. He was working on it, working on it, and he built one of the biggest houses there, But unfortunately, he did not get a chance to spend one night there. When you build and construct, remember that the real investment and what you're aiming to build is your home in paradise. Whatever you give of time, it is just something that you're taking in this life, preparing for the next building a sustainable home for you and your family, maintaining your affairs, sufficing your needs, and the main goal is the Akhirah. We've seen so many people invest in so many things of this worldly life, and maybe they didn't get a chance to actually enjoy what they were working hard for so much. So this Imam reminds us that this is a perishing abode. It's on the verge of collapse. Any moment you can be told that this enjoyment that you were doing and used to aim for, it is no longer something that you can access. And he says, وَمَا تَرَكَتْ لَكَ الْأَيَّامُ عُذْرَ The days that are passing by, haven't given you any excuse. Every day that passes by, you're learning more experiences of life, how perishing this life is. 
and it is not an everlasting enjoyment. How many times we think that something is going well for us and it's going to stay like that, and then a blink of a lie, things that something happens. There has to be ups and downs, sweetness and bitterness, times of ease, times of hardship, to remind you that this dunya, it is not the main target. You could be the best of planners in this world. You could have the best of lineage. You're going to have your moment where you fall ill, lose wealth, go in times of losing people that are close to you. You'll be happy at times and sad at other times. This is something that gives us no excuse to get deceived about this world. لَقَدْ وَعَظَتْكَ لَكِنْ مَتَّعَظْتَ It has admonished us. The days that pass by are an admonition. So in fact, some of the experiences of life is like a slap in the face for us. Wake up from your heedlessness. Wake up! It is time for us to change our life. These are the days of life. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ the blessings that come, the affairs that we take for granted, we need to be told about it. And also, that there's a caller out there. These days, the every day that goes by is bringing you closer and closer to your day of departure. Some of our scholars, such as Imam al Hassan al-Basri, was given words of wisdom he says, Ya ibn Adam, innama anta ayyam. Oh, son of Adam, you're just a number of days. In dhahaba yawmun, dhahaba ba'duk. If one day goes by, some of your life has went by. That is one day in history for you. Is it a day of regret and remorse? Did you take advantage of it? Every day that goes by, some of us, we get happy when we get... When we say it's our, our birthday or we're older, we say I'm this age now, you should be in a state of regret that you're getting closer to your death. There's time, the time is rounding up slowly and slowly. It should be something we're finding that our days are numbered. Not a day of celebration. We're getting closer to death. We're getting closer to be taken to account. What's the celebration about? Yes, to recognize you're at that certain date, there's nothing wrong. But to realize that every day that goes by, you getting older is getting closer to that grave that you're going to be put into. So it is that call, it is making an announcement as a departure, and surely soon it's going to be said, you are intended. وقال المصنف رحمه الله وتسمعك النداد وأنت لاه عن الداعي كأنك ما سمعت وتعلم أنه سفر بعيد وعن إعداد زاد قد غفلت تنام وطالب الأيام ساع وراءك لا ينام فكيف نمت and the translation being they make you hear the call however you are heedless of the caller as if you have not heard and you know that it is a long journey, yet in preparing your provision, you have been neglectful. You are fast asleep while the searchers of days, you are fast asleep while the searcher of the days who does not sleep is striving behind you. So how do you sleep? When a man knows that someone is out to get him, he'll not rest in a state of comfortability. Each one of us, if we are told that there's someone out to get us and he has no break, the moment he gets the opportunity prescribed, it is the final affair. Each one of us will be cautious. We will be worried. We will see 
we'll make plans of ifs or buts if things happen. Malakul Maut is behind us of these passing of days. The moment the final decision is made comes through, it is your final day. So take every day serious. Your days are three. Your days are three. Yesterday, which is gone. Tomorrow, which you're not certain about. Today, which you all have before you. It's all what you have. Take it serious. For that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds of the day of the hour like tomorrow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes of وَلْتَنْظُرُ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدٍ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Let each believer look to what he has prepared for tomorrow because tomorrow could be that day for you. We've actually went through this experience where we text brothers and made plans for tomorrow and we are there later on carrying his casket to the masjid. These are real stories. How much reminders do we need? Isn't that a reminder? You're messaging someone. And then the next day, the plan he's making, it becomes another plan for his funeral. This, it should soften our hearts. That our days are three. Yesterday, which is gone. Tomorrow, what you're not certain about. Today is all what you have. Take it serious. Our great scholar, Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he said, أَلَيْسَ مِنَ الْخُسْرَانِ أَنَّ لَا يَالِيًا تَمُرُّ بِلَا عِلْمٍ وَتُحْسَبْ مِنْ عُمْرِي Is it, isn't it from loss that days and nights go by and I do not increase of goodness, of knowledge. And it's considered from my life. It's written this day of Muharram on September of this year, 2020. A day went by, nothing was achieved and accomplished of the deen of Allah. Isn't that regret? Don't you feel ashamed that you haven't been an asset to Islam. What have you brought forward to the Muslims? What have you done for Islam? Your days are just me, myself, and I. I have to do this for myself. I have to do this for that. I have to plan for my this affair. Okay, what about what you were created for, the main purpose? That's last resort. Some of us, ibadah in certain affairs, it's last resort. Okay, I have nothing to do. Let's see if there's a class going on. Oh, I have nowhere to uh, spend of entertainment today. I'm bored. Let me go to the masjid and see what's going on. That shouldn't be the, our big character. And unfortunately, this is the affair now. For verily when there's some entertainment going on, you don't see certain people. The masajid is forgotten. The book of Allah is not recited. It takes a calamity for us to read the Quran. It takes us to go, uh, something bad to happen to one of our families, to get emotional, to say, okay, now it's time to read the speech of Allah. Let's be in the first row. When times are good, we didn't see you in the first row. When times were good, you weren't picking up the Qur'an. What happened? Why does it need a tragedy to happen in your life to do righteous good deeds? Is it that how selfish we are? Be familiar with Allah at times of ease and He will feel, be familiar with you at times of hardship. He'll be there for you. 
These words we're going to continue to read by this Imam. وقال المصنف رحمه الله معائب هذه الدنيا كثير وأنت على محبتها طبعت يضيع العمر في لعب ولهو ولو أعطيت عقلا ما لعبت فما بعد الممات سوى جحيم لعاص أو نعيم إن أطعت The translation being The defects of this world are so many yet you have been engrossed with its love. Life is lost through amusement and play, and if you were given intellect, you wouldn't have wasted it in mere play. There is nothing after death other than the blazing fire, for the sinful or a pleasure of bliss is f- if you are obedient. The defects of this world is enough for us. that the top leaders of this world, top figures, celebrities, people of the highest of publicity and positioning and prestige, that you find people, how they are with them when they pass away, they bury them and they go on as if he was not. Or you find before his life, He's been taken by drug abuse, depression, sadness. Those people that were around him all left him. Wasn't this the celebrity that we used to all look up to? What happened? This is from the defects of this world. Nothing goes up from this world except it has to go down. وقال المصنف رحمه الله ولست بآمل ردا لدنيا فتعمل صالحا فيما تركت وأول من ألوم اليوم نفسي فقد فقد فعلت نظائر ما فعلت أيا نفسي أخوضا في المعاصي وبعد الأربعين وغب ستا The translation being And you will not have any hope in returning to this world to do any good in that which you have left behind And the first person I blame today is myself, for surely it has committed similar to what you have done. O oh myself, do you indulge into sin after reaching 46 years old? And this is the humbleness of this Imam. He wrote this poem and his words when he was 46 years old. And he confessed, a sh- saying that I reached the age of 46. And I'm indulging into sins, asking himself. If this is a great imam with this humbleness, we should all be in the state. Some of us, the more older we get, the more excuses we give for ourselves. And here it should be the opposite, the more shame we should have. وقال المصنف رحمه الله وأرجو أن يطول العمر حتى أرى زاد الرحيل وقد تأتي أيا غصن, ش... أيا غصن الشباب تميل زهوا كأنك قضى مضى زمن وعشت علمت فدع سبيل الجهل واحذر وصحح قد علمت وما عملت And the translation being O oh branch of adolescence inclining towards arrog- uh, arrogance It is as if time has passed and you will continue to live. You have come to know, so leave off the path of ignorance and beware. And correct, for you have come to know but failed to act. One of the greatest questions that each one of us should be afraid of, that you came to know and what did you do? What did you do with that knowledge? Something that you knew, you've learned. You've maybe completed something of a book or a course. Now the question comes, what did you do for that knowledge? 
Four things that a servant will be asked about. His foot will not move from his place in front of his Lord. لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى تسأل عن أربعة حتى يسأل عن أربعة عن علمه فيما عمل به. Regarding his knowledge, how did he act and go about his knowledge? He memorized the book of Allah and sleeps on Fajr. He memorized the book of Allah. The only time he recites it is he gets something in return. There's an occasion over there. We're going to do this affair and we're going to get something in return. Bismillah. He learns about the virtues of charity and generosity and he holds back when the opportunities arise. These are the things that each one of us should be wary of. When we learn something, let us at least try to do the minimum of being that from that act. That we come Yom Al Qiyamah and the door of Siyam is calling us. The door of Sadaqah is calling us. The door of Salat is open, calling us to come in. The gates of paradise. We did all these acts, striving for it to be from its people. Wallahi, they said, even if you could do it just in a short span, so just so you can be from its people. وقال المصنف رحمه الله ويا من يجمع الأموال أموال كل أيمنعك الردى أيمنعك الردى ما قد جمعت ويا من يبتغي أمرا مطاعا يسمع نافذ من قد أمرت أججت إلى الولاية لا تبالي أجرت على البرية أم عدلت and the translation being an O you who accumulates wealth, tell me, will this accumulation prevent you from death? And O oh, you who seeks a position in which he is obeyed so that your command is executed when heard, you strive to attain rulership without caring whether you oppress the people or not. Those who accumulate wealth, when you accumulate wealth, remember the ayah, الذي جمع مالا وعددا. If you accumulate wealth, do not accumulate it being so much concerned and indulge into it that you become a servant to your dollar, to your currency. تعيس عبد دينار تعيس وانتكس وإذا شيك فلنتقش. Destroyed and ruined is the one who's a servant to a dollar. Servant to a currency. That dollar can make him say certain words. Resign from his religion, the slightest of things. His deen is cheap. The slightest of affairs, he'll resign from his religion about it. I'm going to get this. We're going to get this in this worldly life. Don't worry. My religion is flexible, I can do something about it. But when it's for him to lose something from the dunya, huh, you probably have to tell him a hundred virtues, a hundred merits about something to do before he can step aside from his dunya. Accumulating the wealth that a person accumulates so much counting every penny, every cent. He's always constantly checking the amp of how much money goes in, how much this. Yes, it's something okay that a person is concerned about his savings, whatever he has. But did you ever ask yourself how much time did you count your good deeds that you've done in a day? Our pious predecessors, they would count their deeds more than they count their wealth. How much things have I done today? What am I going to sleep upon? 
What wrong have I done? Let me take myself to account. I'm always taking accountability about my, my day of earnings. Let me take accountability of what I've done of good deeds and bad deeds. For verily, that's the best of earnings. وقال المصنف رحمه الله ألا تدري بأنك يوم صارت إليك بغير سكين ذبحت وليس يقوم فرحة قد تولى بترح بترحة يوم تسمع قد عزلت ولا تهمل فإن الوقت يسري فإن لم تغتنمه فقد أضعت In the translation being Are you not aware that the day it becomes yours without a knife you have been slaughtered. And the happiness of he has taken govern does not stand. With the disobedience of the day you hear, you have been dropped. And do not be neglectful concerning the opportunities of life, for indeed time passes. If you do not seize the opportunity, then surely you have lost. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he gives us advice about being so concerned about prestige and positioning in this world. Having certain titles that we're willing to do, everything goes, all means necessary, just to get a certain title. Oppress someone, do something wrong, do this, do that, cheat, deceive, just to get a positioning, a title that later on that title is meaningless on the Day of Judgment. If you want something, do it the correct way. It is not worth it just getting a title and oppressing and wrongdoing others and undercutting. All of this is regret and remorse. وَقَالَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ تَرَى الْأَيَّامَ تُبْلِ كُلَّ غُسْنٍ وتطوي من سرورك ما نشرت وتعلم إنما الدنيا منام فأحلى ما تكون إذا انتبه إذا انتبهت فكيف تصد عن تصيل باق وبالفان وزخرفه شغلت And the translation being Don't you see every day the leaves are falling from its branches and the days are folding up from your happiness that which you have spread out and you know that this dunya is nothing but a dream and the best part of it is when you wake up so how could you be how could you be hindered from attaining that which lasts and be busy with the adornment of what perishes la ilaha illallah these words that we know Every day that goes by is like leaves falling off a branch. Leaves, one leaf falling to another, these are opportunities that are passing. Opportunities are like a, a cloud that comes up in summertime. Cloud in summertime, how quick does it disappear? Opportunities, when it, they come and we don't take advantage, they may leave and not come back. This is from the tradition of life. Let us know that we should not be hindered and distracted of the everlasting life. This dunya is mazra'atul akhira. This life is where we invest and prepare for the next life. How much have you prepared for the next life? Some people are ahead of us. They're investing and in helping certain people and who are struggling. They seek nearness to Allah by way of it. Some people, they try to do a deed that they can be continuous upon, investing for the Akhirah to meet his Lord with it. What deed do you have that you're investing to meet your Lord with? This is a question that needs to be asked. وقال المصنف رحمه الله هي الدنيا إذا سرتك يوما تسؤك ضعف ما فيها سرت تغرك كالسراب فأنت تسري إليه وليس, تع ولي 
وليس تشعر إن غردت وأشهد كم أباد وأشهد كم أبادت من حبيب كأنك آمن ممن شهدت and the translation being indeed it is the dunya if it were to delight you a day then it would surely disappoint you two folds more of that which you were pleased it deceives you like a marriage so you move you move towards it without feeling that you have been deceived like a mirage and I testify how many it has separated from their beloved ones as if you are safe from that which you have witnessed. These words that continue to remind us, each statement should be sufficient to suffice for softening our hearts. That the dunya, if you attain any happiness therein, know that the sadness that you get out of it is double that amount or even more for some people. It is a day that comes with some days of happiness and days of so much grief and, and things that we have to deal with of hardship. This is to remind us that our real content, our real pleasure is in the Akhirah. It should be sufficient that this dunya is like a mirage. When we see a mirage, we come, we assume something, and then the moment we assume we have it, as if it wasn't there the day before. And let us look how many people it has separated from. Close ones, beloved. How many beloved people have we buried? How many people that are so, were so close to us that we used to smile and joke around with have we buried, put under the ground six feet? They have went forward to what it is their reckoning. How many people have we lost already? This is the dunya. وقال المصنف رحمه الله وتدفنهم وترجع ذا سرور بما قد نلت من إثر وحرثا وتنساهم وأنت غدا ستنف ستهفنا كأنك ما خلقت ولا وجدت تحدث عنهم وتقول كانوا نعم كانوا كما والله كنت and the translation being and you bury them. You bury them and you return delighted from that which you have attained from inheritance and land. And you forgot them and tomorrow you also shall perish as if you weren't created or existed. You speak of them and you say they were. Indeed they were. About Allah, just as you were. These are true words. It sounds harsh, but it's true. Say the truth even if it's bitter. That you find some of the people, someone just died, and it's the main concern at that time is inheritance. How much am I going to get? How much am I going to get this? And when he gets it, he's so delighted and taken by joy. And he forgot to take from the admonition of moats. That should be your main concern at that very moment. Kafa bil mawti wa'idha. Sufficient is death as a reminder. These words that were uttered by this Imam, that sometimes we speak about people saying, so and so was, so and so was like this, and we forget we're going to be a talk of that sort sooner or later what people are going to say so and so was like this 
were going to be the similar affair. وقال المصنف رحمه الله حديثك هم وأنت غدا حديث لغيرهم فأحسن ما استطعت يعود المرء بعد الموت ذكرا فكن حسن الحديث إذا ذكرت سل الأيام عن عم وخال وما لك والسؤال وقد علمت ألست ترى ديارهم خواء فقد أنكرت منها ما عرفت and the translation being, your talk is of them and tomorrow you will also be talked for other than them. So do good as much as you can. Men will return after death as mere remembrance. So be of good remembrance when you are mentioned. Ask the days regarding paternal and maternal uncles. And why such a question when surely you have come to know? Do you not see their homes empty? For surely you have denied from it that which you have come to know. So these are the last words that we're going to conclude with. As we've said, what we have heard is sufficient as a reminder. Let us ask ourselves regarding aunts and uncles, people that we may perhaps used to visit, and now we go and we find their house empty. We find that it's vacant or taken by others that have moved in. The same place that someone used to sit and give us certain words of laughter, we go and we reminisce about it. This is the topic that should soften our hearts. These words are going to be something that we remember tomorrow. If you have done well, you will praise Allah. And if you have forgotten and put these words behind your back, you'll be in a state of remorse and regret. Let us know that what was mentioned about how to soften our heart should be on each of our mind. This life, this society we live in is filled with so many things that harden the heart. Do things from time to time that will soften your heart. Give some time in the day to say istighfar. Give some time in the day to read the Quran. Give some time in the day to do voluntary salat. Give some time in the day where you're alone in the night, raising your hand to your Lord in tears. Just you and your Lord in the darkness. Dhakr Allah khaliyat mafadat aina. In the darkness of the night, no one is looking. Raising your hands to your Lord, asking your, your Creator, in katabtani min al ashqiya, fumhuni wa ktubni min al Oh Allah, if you've written me amongst the wretched, then erase it and write me amongst the happy ones. Like Umar al Khattab used to make the dua. Begging your Lord to grant you a good ending. Begging your Lord that you're granted your book with your right in a joyful manner. Where you go and tell others on the Day of Judgment, come and look at my book. People now, they're boasting, boastful about certain things. Come look at my car. Come look at this. Come see these tweets and messages that I have. Look how much hits I got, abuse. But the main concern, Yom al Qiyamah, is going to say, if our person isn't joyful, saying everybody, come look at the, my book. A state of honor. And some will be embarrassed. They'll be dragged and thrown into the hellfire face first. We ask Allah for His mercy. We ask Allah to soften our hearts. 
We ask Allah to allow us to enjoy the sweetness of the Quran when we read it. We ask Allah to allow us to when we pray behind the Imam to be affected when he recites. We ask Allah to make us, when we do an ibadah, do it feeling it from our hearts. These are the du'as that we should be making. We do not want to make motions of movements. We are there, but yet we're not there. We're making the same movements with people, but our mind is somewhere else. We want to increase of the sweetness of ibadah. We don't want shaitan to always get the best of us in ruining our worship. Let us increase of this dua and make this our goal that we progress and become people that increase. Not the people that Allah says, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ that their hearts become hard like stones. But we want our hearts to be softened. And it's no longer an excuse. It's no longer an excuse to say I'm busy or I don't know so much. Each one of us have been given an occupation or a task according to our level. Fattakullah mustata'atum. With this we end. In this short program and seminar, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us all, each one of us attending, that we come out. We come out from this majlis, our sins forgiven. Wallahi, when I was leaving Toronto, coming here from my du'as, is that Allah allows this reminder to make our hearts soft. And inshallah, he will answer. He is our Lord, Mawlana. He is the noble one that he affects this reminder that reaches the bottom of our hearts, that we become better people, that we become people that increase in the worship of Allah, that our Lord allows us to enjoy again the sweetness of reading the Qur'an and pondering over it. That we become people that take the prostration as a place that is the closest time we are to our Lord. This is the dua that we ask Allah to answer for us. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. With this we end and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you all li husn istima'ikum. وآخر دعوانا للحمد لله رب العالمين and for those who I may not see again السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن 
محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح لا إله إلا الله Assalamu alaikum my brothers I know there's a lecture but there's one thing Masjid you have to have your own sujaya without sujaya it's very difficult mask we can provide you but sujaya we can't and this is part of the in order to come to the masjid you have to have your own sujaya please I hope most of you will listen starting Tonight will be the last we accept somebody who doesn't have sajaya. Please bring your own sajaya. If you cannot afford, come to the masjid, we buy you one. Because we're not going to allow anybody to come in with sajaya, without sajaya. Any young man, his mother have sajaya at home. So please don't be lazy, bring a sajaya. Because we don't want anybody to, su to make sujood where you sujood without sajaya. So please... Bring your own mat. Please, we're begging you, we're asking you. Everybody, and elderly, they're bringing. The problem is the youth. We want you to be, to be the masjid, but I know every household, in, in Muslim household, they have five sajaya. So please bring one. Because many elderly, they complaining to you. They said, majority of them, they don't have. So please, it's a five dollars, bring it. You spend $10, $15 a day for coffee. Have your own sujaya, believe. Zakum Allahu Khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayy ala salati, hayy ala al-falah. قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو اعتدلوا الله أكبر
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ولقد نجينا بني إسرائيل من العذاب المهين من فرعون إنه كان عاليا من المسرفين ولقد اخترناهم على علم على العالمين وآتيناهم من الآيات ما فيه بلاء مبين إن هؤلاء لا يقولون إن هي إلا موتتنا الأولى وما نحن بمنشرين فأتوا بآبائنا إن كنتم صادقين أهم خير أم قوم تبع والذين من قبلهم أهلكناهم إنهم كانوا مجرمين وما خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما لاعبين ما خلقناهما إلا بالحق ما خلقناهما إلا بالحق ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون إن يوم الفصل ميقاتهم أجمعين يوم لا يغني مولا عن مولا شيئا ولا هم ينصرون إلا من رحم الله إنه هو العزيز الرحيم إن شجرة الزقوم طعام الأثيم كالمهل يغلي في البطون كغلي الحميم خذوه فاعتلوه إلى سواء الجحيم ثم صبوا فوق رأسه من عذاب الحميم ذق إنك أنت العزيز الكريم إن هذا ما كنتم به تمترون الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر <تصفيق> <تصفيق> 